So we have uh, Elliot here. We have uh, Chris, we have Matt, and we have Corey on stage. And uh, we'll just pass them the mic and see what happens. Uh, I guess the mic is being passed to the middle. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? We're getting... Yeah! Preaching the end of the first day of Fosdom, so everybody's probably a little bit exhausted. Uh, I'm Chris Weber. I'm one of the co-editors and co-authors of Activity Pub. Just out of curiosity, uh, how many people here are familiar with Activity Pub? Raise your hand. Okay. You know, a good portion of the audience, not everyone. Uh, um, also, how many people have looked at the Activity Pub specification? Wow! That's like a lot of people for a specification. Um, so, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, the, you know, talking about federation, the general idea of federation is that we have uh, different, you know, the same way that you can speak to people on different email servers, we want to do the same thing with the social web. So there's no reason that Twitter sh or Facebook should control just, a, you know, those social sites. We want to be, anybody should be able to run their own server and speak to each other. And ActivityPub is just a protocol that um, describes how the different servers can talk to each other. So anyway, I said who I am. I'm Chris Weber. Uh, I'm going to pass it this way and then it'll wrap around like Mario 2. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Elliot, I'm the maintainer of a software called Funk Whale, which is basically um, a GrooveShark uh, sound slash SoundCloud um, alternative, uh, working with uh, ActivityPub and uh, over, over decentralized uh, technologies. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Matt Baer, I'm working on a project called Write Freely, that's uh, basically a really simple blogging platform that also integrates with uh, uh, ActivityPub. Hello, I am Corey Slepp. I work on GoFed, which is a Golang implementation of ActivityPub, a library, not an end user app. Um, busy working getting V1 out, so uh, I am here on my individual capacity and I don't speak for my employer. Um. We'll just assume that goes for everyone. Uh, um, so I guess, uh, so we're, we're freestyling this one a little bit, uh, partly because of my fault, because I've been very overloaded. Um, uh, so I'm just going to start things out by saying uh, um, what, to the other panelists on the panel, what, what made you interested in picking up ActivityPub specifically? Um, uh, for me, it was because it was really easy to understand, I think, and um, also because um, most of the protocols I've seen were focused on uh, social stuff, and ActivityPub uh, in Fuckwell, it's used uh, not at all for user interaction, but mo 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 more for uh, server-to-server interaction, because Fuckwell uses ActivityPub to exchange music from servers uh, to servers. And uh, ActivityPub uh, helped me do that, and I don't know if I could have done that uh, with something else without reinventing too much things. Yeah, for me, um, I, I was just really attracted to the, how easy it was to, you know, um, start up communities that could, uh, that had their own flavors to them and could still communicate. Um, I started running a Mastodon instance, and that really got me, you know, just seeing how the, the type of people that were coming on board and, um, and uh, seeing how everyone interacted and how the software worked, how you could have similar, you know, music or video or just small posts, and they all come into one place. Um, so I thought, you know, that would be perfect to build on. I would like to add to it. Uh, for me, GoFed is kind of a personal story. I immigrated to Europe in the winter of 2017 and uh, found integration difficult. So I started a side project, which is what it's grown into, and. Um, I've had a couple users, I think Write Freely is one of them, and uh, it's been amazing uh, seeing the ecosystem come to be what it is, and I've learned quite a lot along the way, what the spec is, what the spec isn't, what it is meant to cover, what it is meant to not cover, um, and where the state of the world is now. Before I throw on the next question, I just wanted to say that how much I appreciated the previous talk, actually, and how much I agree that uh, the process of uh, federation and decentralization is a political act, uh, and that um, our real goal for me, uh, and one of the reasons I got involved in standardizing things, is about distributing power. And so I think that it's important to keep in mind with our work. 
Um, but anyway, as uh, uh, I have one more question that I'd like to ask, and then uh, either you all can ask questions, or even better, the audience can ask questions. Um, so, and I have an answer to this for myself, but I'm going to wait last to say it. Um, what is one thing you've liked about Activity Pub, and what's one thing you don't like slash hate? Anybody want to go first? Go Don't be afraid. <laughs> I won't get mad. I like Activity Pub because, it, so, I like it for what it does. And what it does is it gets very distinct applications to agree on a way to communicate. I don't like the way people uh, have taken what is lacking out of Activity Pub sometimes as uh, an excuse to downplay it and dismiss it. Uh, it's meant to grow. It's meant to be iterated upon. And some people look at it as it is now and say, this is it. This is how it's meant to be for the rest of the world for the end of time. It can't grow. Activity Pub is dead in the water. I fundamentally disagree with that uh, claim. Whew, I agree. Uh, Sorry. Uh, if you want to ask questions, we need this one. So oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, one thing I really liked is that it's made of small pieces. So you can pick web finger or activity streams, and it's conceptually easy to, to get. And for Funquail, there were many types uh, of objects that were already available, like audio, listen, and things like that. So I could just pick things, and it worked. And one thing I didn't like uh, was the fact that some things were not specified enough like uh, the HTTP, HTTP signatures thing, or yeah, all the authentic authentication uh, workflow, basically. Yeah, um, I agree with both of those things, basically. Um, I, I like being able to just um, pick and choose which, which types you're going to send around, and pretty much they'll be you know, understood. And, um, and the hardest part was the implementation, just going from the spec. I started reading through it, did not finish it. Uh, it it's, uh, and it, it was kind of open-ended enough to where it was hard. So uh, luckily, our panelist on the end there was uh, around building his own, you know, doing the dirty work. So that's pretty much why I could end up implementing it. Great. So the thing that I like uh, is that Activity Pub has a good conceptual foundation for it, which is the actor model, actually. Uh, everything is an actor. Well, not all things are actors. Things that have inboxes are actors. And they send messages to each other, which is a pretty well understood concept. And the whole idea of the inbox and outbox, I think, are pretty simple. I wish people would pick up the client to server protocol, by the way. We could. That would be really great. Uh, but, uh, um, but I think. Uh, um, and I think that having that foundational understanding, even though many things are an actor model, understanding that your, your implementation is an actor model allowed the, the specification to be much cleaner. Uh, what I don't like, uh, it sounds like we're achieving some consensus on this panel, actually. Uh, um, we did leave some, some gaps in the spec, and that's correct. Um, and uh, the reason for that is um, we had a few years of a, a specified timeline. We got several extensions. And at the time that we moved to specification, there were certain things that were not agreed upon in the community. For example, how do you do authorization and authentication is probably the biggest complaint that people bring up all the time. Um, and uh, uh, and it was, and we instead put suggestions and actually pointed at community suggestions in the specification. And that's because if we did it at that time and we implemented it and we threw it in there, we would have just suggested something that was probably wrong. Uh, and so uh, we decided to deliver a specification with the parts that we knew were right in general, uh, with one big exception, which is shared inbox, which I think we did something wrong with that at the end uh, um, in trying to help Mastodon get it out the door quickly. Um, but, uh, um, but I think that, um, and part of my goal over the next couple years, by the way, uh, it was just announced a couple days ago. I got a grant from uh, um, Samsung's uh, uh, Stack Zero thing, and I'm going to be spending the next couple years uh, on a project called Spri Sprightly that develops demos on how we can fill in those gaps 
to make the uh, federated social web much more resilient. And that includes things like uh, what happens when a server goes down and all that content disappears and then nobody can interact with it anymore. I just put out the first demo that begins to give an answer to that uh, this week called Golem. And uh, um, so that's going to be my next couple years is trying to develop demos that piece by piece show how we can bring the Fediverse to the next level, even closer to the kind of things that peer-to-peer -peer networks provide. Um, anyway, with that, uh, um, I'd like to open it up to the audience, unless do you, any of you have a question that you'd like to move forward on. All right, I bet some people have questions. We have at least one. Yep. Uh, I've, uh, while I implemented um, ActivityPub in our project, it was really easy um, implementing the parts that already had been implemented by Mastodon, Pleroma, and so on, and to see how they did make it. But our project is fairly complicated, so uh, we have a much larger thing to implement. And uh, then I came to a point where I was unsure how to implement this or that. And so I guess it would be important to have some kind of coordination, some kind of discussion forum. I, I, don't, I don't know what, uh, where all developers or most developers should agree upon how to make things. Yeah. So uh, have you any suggestions how, how to do this? Because I don't want to develop things who would be standard conform, not only for our software, but something that all would implement that way or in other, another way, but okay. so, so that we agree upon this. Yep, yep. My bad. Uh, so we actually, I'm co-chair of a group called the Social Web Community Group, which is a W3C group that anybody can join. Unlike the working groups that are set up to set out standards, this is a space to incubate ideas and figure out the next generation of things that have not been well defined. You're welcome to join. Uh, anyone in this audience is welcome and encouraged to join. Uh, I will say that I have not been doing a great job as community uh, um, as community leader, uh, aside from showing up to meetings, which I don't always do. Uh, and I would uh, um, like to do better. And one of the other problems is that we have a whole bunch of issues, and I haven't been getting through them very well. But in one of the most recent uh, um, one of the most recent meetings, and I haven't put it on the activitypubs.rocks site. Sorry, sorry, I know I'm very terrible about these things. Uh, um, someone did set up, and I forget the name of it. It was used to theoretically coordinate this panel at the end. Uh, there is a uh, um, forum. What was the name of it? Hub. What? Ah, socialhub.network. Social right, socialhub.network. Uh, that's going to be a place for people to communicate. We also have an IRC channel on uh, the W3C thing, but that's not, it's kind of disconnected, but I think that, that the socialhub.network uh, could help out a lot. Um, but uh, do any of you all have comments? Um, no, about uh, Social Hub Network, yeah, it's really interesting. I'm using it for Funquail. And uh, if more projects um, came and use it uh, all uh, together, it would be interesting to coordinate on developments and uh, fill the gaps in the specs or things like that. Sorry, I have one last thing to say. Um, this is an area I really want to explore once I feel good about the GoFed library. Um, I've posted a, a blog post about this, uh, <laughs> exploring an idea where you take a, uh, an ActivityPub extension and embed it into ActivityPub itself so your extension to ActivityPub can federate, which would uh, enable decentralized authorities managing their own ActivityPub extensions, but since it's federated data, a centralized repository. So you don't have the problem of you have to know all these different projects and their extensions. It's on the Fediverse. However, you don't have the problem of a centralized authority where it's, you know, David versus Goliath kind of situations and acrimony and power struggles. Each person can manage their own or group can manage their own activity pub extensions. So it's an idea I really want to explore. We should talk more after this panel. Uh, other questions? <clears throat> Um, I'm impressed by the number of people who said that activity pub is simple because uh, I feel really stupid because implementing it was harder for me. Um, What's your what, project name? Hmm? What's your project name? Excuse me? What's your project name? I just had a curiosity. Uh, it's not released yet. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, it's, cool. Maybe we'll it will stay internal. Um, la, the, the biggest difficulty for me was to understanding that activity pub by itself is not important. It's actually mastodon pub. 
uh, being compatible with Mastodon, which is a real goal for most people. And then there are a lot of things you don't find. I've read the specification, and it's uh, only a small part of what you need to know. Uh, you need authentication, authorization, uh, web finger, encoding of content. Uh, a lot of things are completely not specified. So to be more concrete, do you think it would be a good idea if someone were brave enough to describe the actual profile uh, which makes a Mastodon pub or uh, whatever its name, uh, all the things that you need to know when you want to be a part of the Fediverse? I think that documenting how to be compatible with the, let's say, average current deployment of ActivityPub would be good. And, you know, especially a lot of people want to be compatible with Mastodon especially. And in fact, I think that Mastodon compatibility is something that is important and useful for many people in this community. I also think that for those people who are trying to do things that are not just Mastodon, you know, that are not just, uh, um, you know, uh, microblogging things, we also want to be able to have conversations about how to do that as well, right? How do you post an audio that Funk will, will, will be able to receive and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so I think it's, I think it's, we'd like more of those sources uh, to be able to fill it, to do those things. Um, and, you know, uh, my main work that's coming up is going to be talking about much more next generational things, but we should document at least kind of the current generation's things that are not specified. Um, yeah. Um, I believe there is also a project called uh, Phineas, maybe. It's a test suite, automated test suite, that can um, assess compatibility between different Fediverse software. So you, can, you could test and build automatically uh, each Funquail release and test it against uh, Writefully or um, uh, Mastodon or Pleroma. Oh, oh. oh OK. <laughs> so congrats. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to say, um, yeah, I think also as um, people implementing it, you know, I've been meaning to do this, um, uh, to just write about it in general, just talking about, okay, this is how I did it. This is how I did this one piece of functionality. Um, I think just everyone, especially while we're all kind of exploring and trying things out, that's what we should be doing as well as part of the development process. Just... Uh, other questions? Yes. Ready. Yeah. Oh, right there. Um, so you said in your introduction you, you learned like what activity pub is and what it's not. So can you elaborate on that, especially on what it's not? Maybe all of you can like like exp your own idea what um, like what people might interpret. Oh, yeah, I'm going to use activity pub for my thing, and it's going to be awesome. But maybe there are actually some cases where you shouldn't use it. Okay, so this <laughs> this goes to like a philosophy I've developed. I've been developing over a year, and I'm not sure if it's what was intended by the social working group. You know, I read the notes, um, but I really view ActivityPub as, you know, it's two protocols in one. There's a client to server and server to server. That's how it's divided. But I view it as two protocols in a different sense. I view ActivityPub as a physical byte transmission protocol, get getting bytes from A to B. I also view it as a very lightweight social networking application layer on top of it. Um, so it's one protocol with both a transmission layer and a little bit of an application layer. And what kind of helped me realize this were folks at like uh, the uh, ForgeFed effort and the uh, Value Flows effort. These are people who want to extend act activity streams of vocabularies into other domains like the economic and the uh, code forge domains. And it made me realize that ActivityPub had built in this social media lightweight vocabulary uh, bias into it. Um, so there, it, so that's kind of fuels my perspective on why we need to iterate on this to allow these other kinds of, uh, I call them flavors of networks coexisting with each other. So you can have your code forge living on its own if you want. But if you want to build a co-op around a code forge, then maybe you also want the economic uh, network as well. So, did, did that answer your question? Thank you. Uh, I have two things from that. Uh, one of them is um, what activity pub, so I'm kind of twisting your question a little bit into what activity pub could be. Uh, and also, um, so there have been some perspectives. So one of the criticisms that ActivityPub has gotten actually was that um, 
some people don't like that we allow for extensions, for instance, actually, because uh, when you allow for extensions, that means by default there's going to be things you don't understand, right? Because somebody will have used. Now, we have a way of doing extensions, um, uh, but the, let's just ignore what that way is and ask, should extensions be allowed? And there's a famous post by one of the diaspora developers that says basically, no, you should bake in everything that your world is going to be at standards time, and then that's it. Um, and I never got around to blogging about my response to that, but to me that, that doesn't, uh, I don't see how we could, I felt like if I had tried to write in all of the types that were possible in activity streams in an activity pub at the time that we put it out, um, it would be very egotistical to me to believe that I would know what the future was going to be. So for instance, maybe the future was going to involve um, you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of interest in having like uh, virtual spaces, right? Maybe you put on a helmet, and you walk around, you know, somebody's, you know, virtual, you know, reality thing in some sort of, you know, VR helmet, right? You know, we have image and video. The future may involve that type of thing. Uh, it certainly doesn't exist well enough to us to specify at the time that activity streams and activity pub were released. Um, I can't assume that I know what the needs of that community are going to be, and I don't want to lock them out. So it's an open world system as opposed to a closed world system, and those are two different ways of handling things. And I think that, um, so I stand by that decision. Um, I think there are ways that we can make extensions easier, and then we should talk about that. Uh, but I think that uh, um, the other thing that I'd like to say, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm monopolizing this, but I, I'm gonna say the one other thing really quick anyway. The, um, the other thing that I was, oh, I lost it. I'll come back to it later. <laughs> Uh, do you have anything, or do you want to move to the next question? Um, yeah, I would just say, um, as far as today, uh, you know, especially, you know, there are a lot of different applications. Write Freely is one of the like um, m more lightweight impl implementers of um, ActivityPub, and that's that was just a design decision. So that's kind of how, you know, there's definitely the protocol side, and it can do a lot, and it does have a bit of that application layer. But it's really, if you need it, then you know, I, I think it takes a lot of conscious thought about, okay, is this actually going to add to the product or is this kind of something that, that we don't even need? So, it's just. Okay. Uh, any more questions? Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wait. Oh. Yeah. Um, if an answer to my question is out of scope for, the, uh, for here, uh, please say so. I have no personal experience with social media. Um, I've seen uh, websites, but uh, never used it. And um, I dislike centralized stations. I would like to get into federated systems. And so I have some difficulty uh, imagining what the activity pub accomplishes. What kind of information is sent out and can you give an, uh, an end user benefit of the federation between different platforms? Okay. Uh, what would you say? I'll, I'll, I've got too many opinions on this. I'm going to hand this off to one of you. What is the end user benefit of federation? Um, for Funquail, our use case is to have um, people sharing music and creators uh, sharing their music publicly, and to have people commenting on music and sharing people with uh, sharing music with uh, their followers and stuff like that. So maybe that answers your question, because you could do that uh, on any server and uh, interacting with any other server and any other user um, transparently. Wait, do any of you else? No, no. I'll let you. <laughs> oh, I really wanted to talk about the thing that I just remembered was in part for the other question, so. Uh, you want me to, I can elaborate more. Um, it's allowed uh, really uh, cool interactions where you can have a microblogging site like Pleroma or Mastodon uh, have its users sharing you know, their uh, thoughts. And then as well, with Peertube, for example, someone uploading videos, um, whether it's video blogging or whether it's uh, you know, instructional videos, and that will pop up in a Mastodon feed, Pleroma feed. Uh, PixelFed as well, I think, uh, just launched with lots and lots of pictures, beautiful pictures, and so you're able to get those as well and uh, your Mastodon feed. So it allows these users, um, if they want, and this is an open problem, uh, to sign up for these different services and uh, have the experience they want uh, consuming media, different kinds of media. 
It is a, if I want to use it, it's a precondition that I have an account on each of those services. Ah, this ties in directly with what I wanted to say. <laughs> okay, so uh, the thing I forgot that I wanted to talk about was the client-to-server and server-to-server -server protocol and why both of those exist and how it ties in directly to this, actually. So client-to-server and server-to-server. -server. Curiously, the client-to-server thing, so actually towards the end of the activity pub specification part, the end of the social working group, we were running out of time and it wasn't clear if we'd get the federated stuff done. And Evan Prodromo, who's really responsible for a lot of activity pubs design and his predecessor OStatus, uh, um, said, we should just release the client to server specification and not the server to server. And, uh, um, and I said, no, I'm quitting the group if we don't get out server to server. So we, and we did get it out. And thankfully, it was Mastodon picking up that, that allowed us to actually get that amount of momentum. But there was a weird thing that happened. We thought that one of the reasons why we would push out the client to server instead of the server to server was that it's such an easier protocol, um, actually. And then weirdly, I'm getting messages saying, oh, the reason the client to server server thing is not implemented is that it's much harder. Like what? Uh, so it's almost the same protocol. And there's an interesting world that opens up if we took client to server and server to server seriously. Because if we, it's almost the same protocol design wise. And if we took this seriously, it meant that you could use Mastodon's interface to talk to PeerTube to talk, and PeerTube's interface to talk to, you know, uh, um, you know, you know, Funk Whale or anything like that. And, but the way that the Fediverse is currently designed is actually really bizarre to me, it has been to encourage each one of the projects that has come out has wanted to brand themselves as like the activity pub server for this. And like, it's cool that like these different things are happening and maybe that actually motivates developers and I, I'm sure you all have comments on this, you know, that to be able to do that type of thing. But to me, um, you know, uh, um, so my friend Sebastian and I were just talking about this and uh, uh, one of the, you know, one of the, uh, there are a bunch of people who are currently le leaving Google Plus who are really disappointed because one of the things that Google Plus did for them is that it actually was trying to take seriously that you could ha host a whole bunch of different media types on it. I don't see why we shouldn't try to pursue this vision of, you know, you are able to swap out any client for any server. Um, so I'm curious what my fellow panelists have about that idea. Um, oh, and the reason that that's an answer to your question is that you wouldn't need five different accounts. Yeah, um, for me, I think one reason is that it's really hard to design a, cl a client that would work with any server because for Funk Whale, the main use case is to listen to music and for Mastodon is to share toots and uh, browse the feed, and those are simply not the same use cases. So if you wanted to build a client that would do all of this, it would be a huge beast and maybe with a bad user experience. But that's an hypothesis. And, uh, 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 this is actually somewhere I've been thinking as well, and I, maybe it's what you're saying. I don't know if we're, I think we're like accidentally on the same wavelength because I've been imagining it to where you would essentially have your Mastodon account, for example, but then you would use Funkwell to post to, like through the client to server, send it to Mastodon or something. So um, that's kind of where I've been going. In addition to the write freely side, the, the actual producing content, I'm uh, working on the reading side, so um, called read as, and that's basically just a nicely, it, basically a feed reader except built on activity pub. And, um, using that to, again, you wouldn't have to create an account, but having it integrate with Write Freely to where you have these, um, kind of these two sides where you're subscribed to all these people in the Fediverse, you're receiving their posts, and if you want to curate some of that um, for other people to read, you just boost it, and, and that ends up going to your Mastodon account or, or whatever, or your blog, or, you know, wherever else on, in the Fediverse, um, that you're kind of connected to. So that's, I've kind of been thinking about those lines. Too. Yeah. So my, my question is, but I don't have deep knowledge of, um, of activity pub, but from the information I got in my brief investigation of it, it's, my feeling has been that the concept like server and client, stuff like this, really are wired into the protocol and um, that it would not be suitable for, a, for example, a peer-to-peer -peer solution. And f because, for example, the, the assumption that uh, domain name 
is the way to reach uh, the other server and so on. While, for example, in, in my world, it's more like you have a cryptographic ID and that's the way to find the other. Right. Um, I, I would like to know if my impression is wrong or if, if it's like that. No, you're right, but there's no reason that it actually has to be the case, in my view. Um, the, I actually think that there is no... So, you're right. I actually think that one of the weird things that happened... Um, the current, one of the reasons why I think the current generation of the Fediverse, and I, I have ideas on how to be able to do this with ActivityPub, but maybe we should actually talk. Um, uh, you know, for instance, let's assume that you just actually, why should your client and server not be the same thing? A lot of it has to do with the current assumption that everybody needs to run a server that exists somewhere else, po probably all hosted at Amazon. Uh, um, and you're like, hooray, I've decentralized things, right? And uh, um, as opposed to you know, home hosting or even just on the, the machine that you're actually on. And it's a weird thing that we've developed in this mindset where we've given up on the idea of your personal computer being a very active agent in the system, which was much stronger of an idea in peer-to-peer -peer systems. Uh, this, and, uh, um, and I think that a large portion of the reason for this is that a number of interests, a number of things happened at once. One, Web 2.0 happened, and everybody assumed they needed to run a server. Uh, two, ISPs, uh, IPv4 started to run out of spaces, and we started to get more NATs, and uh, ISPs actually started to put in their terms of service that you can't self-host a server, right? Three, peer-to-peer uh, um, -peer networks became associated with file sharing, and specifically file sharing of pirated content, right? When in reality, there's no reason that peer-to-peer -peer ser services can't be used for all sorts of other things. So I completely agree with you that um, this is something we should be exploring and the separation between it. So technically, nobody's using the client-to-server protocol anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But, uh, um, but the server-to-server -server protocol, there's no reason if I spin up a, um, a Tor Onion service for ActivityPub and host it on my machine that's right there. Aside from the liveness problem, there's no reason that I can't actually send a message um, to another person who's hosting an ActivityPub service over a Tor Onion service that's just running on their own local machine. And um, another reason for that, I think, has to do with um, a complicated topic called Zuko's Triangle. Uh, and the way that donate main names come into that. But I feel like that's a long topic, and I'll be exploring it with Sprightly, and maybe you and I should talk more. Uh, do either of you want to, any of you want to discuss it, or should we do next question? Next question. Yes. Uh, one thing I like about ActivityPub is that it does everything that OStatus did. <laughs> I'm from GNU Social. Uh, and uh, the thing I dislike, uh, sort of, about ActivityPub is that it tries to sort of portray an image of, pro uh, of well, serving private content some so in some way, or like ACLs and stuff. Like, there's the notion of uh, of a private message or a direct message or whatever it's called. Uh, I think it's somewhere it says explicit, explicitly that the spec doesn't have the scope of uh, like preserving privacy or, or like guaranteeing the end-to-end -end uh, encryption or whatever. Like, like there's no specific, it's explicit in the specification, I remember. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I, and yeah, well, like the, I'm thinking, considering the last talk, that like we should be uh, open about how political code is and like maybe specifications as well. Like maybe we should say that like this has nothing to do with private messages or el otherwise we have a huge problem of sor this, like solving federation where everyone have their different scope and uh, sense of privacy, essentially. Activity, I, I, any comments about that? Yeah. ActivityPub can absolutely do private messages, but the premier application that took off and ran with it um, even picked it up partly for that reason. But, um, and this is one of the reasons why I say shared inbox was a mistake, actually. Um, Shared inbox moves from the idea that you're sending a message directly to another entity, directly to that entity's inbox, and instead assumes that you start routing things based off of the server that you're sending to's understanding of the addresses that are coming in. Uh, and that's a big problem. Um, ActivityPub, as it's designed, is, um, we'll state, well, let's go in a couple approximations. First one, 
If you go with the activity pub spec, and let's ignore shared inbox, even with shared inbox, this is semi-true, it's as secure as email, right? As much as I can send an I, and in fact, Evan Prodromo designed it specifically influenced by email in that it has email-like addressing where you do to and blah, 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 and you post directly to a specific user's inbox. And if you implemented your server the same way that many mail servers do, where it ends up very much so in a specific user's inbox, then it would absolutely be direct messages as secure as email, right? But now maybe you're talking about end-to-end -end encryption. Right, so end-to-end um, -end encryption, the reason why we might want that is that a server, um, you have to trust your administrator to not snoop on your stuff. And that's the same thing in email, the same reason we have that thing. And you'll notice how well email is doing with the end-to-end -end encryption thing, which is pretty bad. You know, and, uh, um, and uh, I'll, I'll finish this and then I'll get back to you. Uh, the, uh, um, and uh, there are things like OMEMO and things like that that we could observe. We actually had an issue in Activity Stream as, and I think it, or Activity Pub, and I think it still exists about how we could do end-to-end -end encryption. But if we instead moved over to the fellow who's disappeared, who was sitting over there, it's a comment about more peer-to-peer -peer delivery, where we're doing direct messages between two different people's home computers, this entirely disappears. Um, if the server-to-server -server transmission is from my Tor Onion service on my, the machine that's running on my local machine, and I send the message directly to your inbox, directly on that machine, there is no man in the middle of an administrator. Um, and there are ways to be able to move forward with that, and that's one of the things I'll be exploring at Sprightly. But anyway, you raised your hand again, so what was the follow-up? Um, Can you repeat the question? The, the, question wa the question slash statement was, uh, uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in a federated server environment, you always have the problem of the server basically sending things around from place to place. Um, if you take the activity pub serious, uh, spec seriously at its most core of people sending things from inbox to inbox, it's very clear and direct exactly which messages get posted exactly to which inboxes when you start to get into attaching the, the public inbox or followers, things get more complicated. The original version of ActivityPub, you would still post, except for to the, the public inbox that we had and then removed, you would still post directly to each follower's individual inbox. The shared inbox that we then discussed later would actually, uh, as a compromise when we were talking to Mastodon's folks, would actually have even still with that one for the non-public posts, anything that was not explicitly directed uh, to public, you would actually, the intermediate one that we discussed and then was rejected, you would actually deliver still to the shared inbox thing and you would deliver a header of explicitly every single person that was going to be. The receiving server would not inference who it was going to be distributing things to. It would be explicitly distributed to these specific groups. Um, that didn't happen partly because the response from Mastodon, which I, I, I said, okay, that makes sense, and I moved forward with at the time, and then later regretted, was, um, but we already have the information on our side of who the followers are, so we can more efficiently distribute it without that header. I think that was a big mistake, and actually violates the possibility of ActivityPub being very secure from an object capability perspective. There are no ACLs in ActivityPub, by the way, and there shouldn't be, but people have discussed it possibly adding them. Um, and this is one of the things I'm going to be exploring with Sprightly is how to make ActivityPub into a very secure protocol developed from object capability security literature. Um, so anyway, that's my response. It was kind of long, I'm sorry. Uh, if you're more interested in following along someone who's pursuing this, LightPub and uh, a Pleroma developer named Kanini is looking heavily into this area. Uh, next question? Yes. So. <clears throat> More to uh, back to philosophy and economics. Uh, popular microblogging platforms, I heard, uh, are uh, Twitter and Instagram. Will they uh, adjust for compliance? Or oh, will they pick up ActivityPub? Or otherwise, what are what what reactions come from from these uh, the, that category of uh, Right. Providers will of Twitter or Facebook ever uh, pick it up, or will they even notice? Right. I'm sure they've noticed a little, 
but they clearly don't care too much, um, partly because we haven't really hit their radar on the level of success, I think. Um, I mean, we've got a couple million users now, but it's not really enough to really worry Facebook or Twitter. Uh, I think you brought up regulation, like whether or not a regulative organization might force them to federate or something like that. I think that would be really interesting and I think very unlikely to happen. Uh, um, but anyway, uh, I think they're kind of ignoring us partly because I wrote in a blog post um, one of the reasons that the big players, I think, haven't actually um, had to really fight us in any way is that we tend to spend a lot of time fighting with each other and, they don't, and we do that work for them. So I'd like to do less of that, more collaborating. Um, but anyway, I, I have very low hopes that um, organizations whose profit model is entirely based around them being the walled garden of your, uh, um, of your content are going to be interested in picking up uh, the Fediverse, basically. Uh. Hi. So, um, for some comments. So, I absolutely love the fact that it's based around an activity operating on an object. That's absolutely great. I don't really like the fact that it's using JSON LD uh, to do things like uh, sometimes I'm going to be a uh, list, sometimes I'm going to be a uh, string, sometimes it's going to be this, sometimes it's going to be that. And um, I'm specifically, I was looking at GoFed, and that, that, I mean, you, you had to generate so much code uh, that was killing my VPS when I was trying to build GoFed. So I really don't like that aspect. I wish there was a better schema. Now, uh, right, another comment. I really like WebFinger, and I wish uh, that in the social aspect of it, it was more clearly specified that WebFinger is a nice thing to look up email-like uh, identifiers. Actual question. Have you looked into uh, federating, sorry, cooperating with uh, uh, XMPP Standards Foundation specifically to uh, replace the uh, microblogging specification or something like that? Did, did you get in touch with them? Because uh, that thing is based around uh, Atom, but not even like uh, uh, Ostatus used it. Slightly differently, slightly incompatible, and probably not really uh, trivially uh, interoperable. So is there any work uh, interacting with them? XNPP is awesome and it was my first federated love. Uh, so first I want to say that. Uh, and more people should run XNPP. I hate the fact that XNPP is kind of dying. and My buddy list is very small. Um, and I blame partly large corporations picking up XNPP and dropping it, in fact, which could happen to the Fediverse if, you know, Facebook or Google or whatever did pick it up. Um, did we talk to them? I have talked with them a number of times. Uh, uh, um, what time is it left? How much? 15 minutes left? Oh, that's not bad. Uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, Activity Pub, I actually asked Evan Prodromo early on, why didn't we just do all this stuff over XMPP? And he said, well, it could, if it could be done over XMPP, then maybe I'd be interested. Several social attempts have been done for XMPP, and nobody agrees on whether or not you represent each user individually or if the server um, is doing things. And now there's maybe this standard, which didn't exist at the time we started. Yeah, um, and, uh, uh, but I think that um, part of the other reason for it is that ActivityPub is a web protocol taking the web protocol as being a web protocol very seriously. It's entirely based on get and post, right? And XMPP isn't that. But XMPP is pretty awesome in some other ways, right? Um, the, you're going, eh, but, uh, um, but I, I've never um, seen, um, yeah. It's a specific uh, set of pop subducts that do this, and there's even a personal like, microblogging subspecification of it, and so on and so on. So it, it, it can be mapped if, it's, if they looked at anything remotely similar. Like it, it can be mapped if you kind of squint your eyes and you figure out how to, and you intentionally make that a decision, right? Um, but it doesn't, it's not fundamentally a web protocol, right? It's not fundamentally the way that activity pub is. Um, I'm going to backtrack, make a comment on your last one about WebFinger. A lot of people would like to see WebFinger officially in activity pub, and it's not done intentionally for a reason. Uh, and let me be very clear about why that is. In fact, I, I think it's a shame that the way that WebFinger is being handled is not with the best way that it could be being handled in ActivityPub, which is to use the ACCT colon URI um, form of WebFinger, because we use URIs for everything, and that would be the best way to do it. And actually, that's perfectly compatible with ActivityPub spec, and that's not how it ended up shaking out, basically because of the way that 
implementers were already using WebFinger. Um, the, uh, um, however, the reason why we're not using WebFinger specifically was um, the same reason why HTTPS is not actually mandated in the specification despite everybody being like, HTTPS, how else is it going to be secure? The demo that I gave of how to do securely transmitting things over um, a peer-to-peer -peer network would not be possible in the way that I did it in a way that can be offline if we only did HTTPS. And you will always have the centralization of DNS, always. And there's an uh, um, if we require WebFinger. And actually, that's one of the biggest reasons I'm, I'm going to argue and that we'll get into more with the Sprightly Papers about why uh, federated social web things are so hard to roll out is partly our reliance on DNS and SSL security authorities. If you imagine instead uh, Bob at 200 characters of garbage dot onion, nobody could address that guy, right? Um, there is a solution, it's called pet names, and we'll get into it more throughout the Sprightly project. Um, as for the other one, I want to hand it over to this guy who worked on GoFed, and then I have comments as well, probably in response to him, so. Uh, we still have three questions to go. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's let him respond, and then I just won't respond. Okay. <laughs> just, me afterwards. just for the GoFed part, V1, you can compile in Raspberry, Raspberry Pi 3, so. <laughs> okay, next question. Hey, so we're from Dublin City University and are working on a social blogging platform using ActivityPub. Wow. And we are worried that uh, a federated social system is more susceptible to the problem of echo chambers. Uh -huh. And so we're working on a few extra spec features to try and remedy this and generally increase engagement across the federation. And we were just wondering if anyone had any advice or opinions or experience in implementing searching across like the federation mm -hmm. and also in like recommender systems in a federated social system. We've got at least one person over there who is Arne, who you should talk to, who works on this stuff with Freenet. Um, I'm going to with, uh, hold back from commenting. Anybody else? I just want to say, as implemented currently, uh, Mastodon and Pleroma tend to be very account-centric with discoverability, and there's no reason it needs to be account-centric discoverability. Um, I was discussing before with some other folks interested that it could be a server-to-server -server discoverability. Uh, this discoverability problem has not been solved at all. Um, so if you discover, hey, doing server-to-server -server wholesale discovery is the way to go, I'd definitely be interested in following your work. Um. There is funding for uh, discoverability uh, if you didn't get the, the word yet. Uh, NLnet.nl slash discovery, there is uh, 5.6 million euro over the next three years. No strings attached for free software projects and this is part of the thing that can be funded. Awesome. So basically, um, if you do a recommendation, be very, very, very careful about spam. Um, I'm release manager of the Freenet project and we have some um, spam defense in there which does not rely on any centralized service, but it's a problem which can really easily go bad and which is not tri trivial to solve. I have some math lying around which shows that we can actually scale it up to the million or billion scale if we um, accept that there is no global visibility. That visibility goes only over um, connections between people, and it should be possible to map it to um, non-Freenet stuff. In Freenet stuff, basically, it's um, that there's a shared database which you can access where you can have anonymous accounts, and this has to be somehow mapped uh, on the federation. But then um, I, maybe I can give Christopher um, the address of some uh, reference for that, so he can put, uh, paste it around in the right discussion forum. Let's 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 chat more. Let's distribute these ideas. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to make a bit of a reaction to your quick dismissal of uh, the possibility of a uh, corporation uh, implementing ActivityPub because, I mean, no one thought Microsoft would buy GitHub. Uh, 
that long. So I think dismissing it is, uh, is not a good idea. It's really about addressing it. And uh, maybe there's no technical solution to that. Maybe it's an identity solution. That's fair. That's true. By the way, great talk. Uh, uh, the, uh, um, I agree. Uh, and actually, it's something we should be careful about because of what we've seen happen with XMPP and email as big players pick it up and then decide that they're the only players in the space or lose interest. I think having decentralized authorities can really help with distributing the power. Again, thank you for your excellent talk. Hey, Serge. So I have a question for everyone but Chris. Uh, so the, the implementers. Uh, so there's a part of Activity Pub that talks about uh, streams, and it basically looks like no one really uses that sort of secondary stream. So like, yeah, if you, if you are interested in these inbox and outbox of this user, you might also care about these other streams. And when I think about um, you know, the way we use uh, Activity Pub right now, it's basically like, OK, I'm going to subscribe to you on Mastodon and on Funk Whale and PixelFed. Right, where I'm like, oh, but it should just be like my feed should consist of a whole bunch of these sub feeds that can, you know, go to the right place. So the, for the folks who are actually implementing, you know, these protocols, like, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I don't have any solution for that, but I, I think it's a ZOT, ZOT, ZOT? Uh, ZOT, yeah. yeah. There is a protocol to, to do federated uh, identities and nomadic identities. So maybe I mean, it's in the protocol now. Like it's in it's in Activity Pub where you can just set secondary streams. Oh, oh, I didn't know about that. Sorry. No. Uh, honestly, I didn't know about that either. <laughs> so everybody's just looking at Mastodon's code base. So as someone who co-generated the spec and treated the spec as data, I am aware of that and everyone's lack of supporting that. Um, but since I'm a library, I don't really have power to go tell people how to build applications and how to use the library. So, um, we could use your input then. Yes. <laughs> we, we need you. The users should stand up and demand power from the implementers <laughs> and specification of this. Yeah, so I, I have no question. I, I have no, so uh, thanks for mentioning the test suite, the federated test suite, but it's, it's not, the test suite is not called FINAS. Um, FINAS is the Federated Networks Association and one of our main goals is to actually yeah, get everyone together. So that is what you actually mentioned with the forum and correct me guys if I'm wrong but uh, we actually exchanged already some mails with the forum you mentioned so if someone is interested in the association then yeah we should definitely have a talk. Very good. Is that it then? One last? One more. Aha! Okay. Uh, you already talked. <laughs> so I have a troll question. Because um, a few months ago I bumped into um, some articles and uh, also a conference, big conference with big sponsors, which says blockchain 3.0 and the future of decentralized internet. What about it? <laughs> Uh, I had a really... They are, the, they are in the spotlight, you know, where, uh, everyone, everywhere you hear about uh, decentralized internet, it's always blockchain here, blockchain there, so... My favorite blockchain is Git, with signed commits. Uh, uh, but the, I mean, blockchain is very vague what that means, because there's a whole lot of things that it could be. It's the cloud of uh, Merkle tree situation. Uh, the, but, you know, I had an interesting experience... Uh, there's a lot of hype around blockchains right now because there's a lot of money around blockchains right now. Uh, I had an interesting experience at Rebooting Web of Trust last year where I was talking with somebody who said, I'm really excited about blockchains because they can finally bring decentralization to the world. And I'm like, they have their uses in particular domains, but sometimes you don't want the overhead of a database that grows forever. And, uh, you know, all of the, you know, like depending on which definition of blockchain it is, there are some other computational things overhead. You know, I, I'm interested in the actor model, you know, in my own work and stuff like that. And they said, oh, I thought that blockchain just meant decentralized systems. <laughs> and I was like, now I get it. 
right? Like, so I think that, like, um, that's a, the only exposure that many people have to these things. And I think there's a lot of cool things that the person who was standing next to me, Mark Miller, who works on, has, you know, done a tremendous amount of work in object capability, said something really brilliant uh, at that moment and said, there's only one case where you need a blockchain. And it's a distributed system where the ordering events is critical to its operation. That's the only case. Um, double spending problem makes sense if you need a decentralized payment system. There are lots of other cases that don't need that. Um, but I do think that there are cool things you can do with things like secure scuttlebutt and stuff like that that are blockchain-ish, but a little bit closer to a Git repository um, where you have no guarantees it won't fork than, you know, like this thing that requires consensus. Yeah. Uh, I think, it's, do we still have time for uh, um, the GNU social final question? Uh, sorry, I'm just hijacking, but there are already uh, social networks running on blockchain, and it's really awful because you have to download the whole chain, and it takes five or six hours before you have to, you can, you can use it. Maybe you have a lot of hard drive space. Yeah, the, what I'm thinking is like the, what I would like to have a discussion about is like how many social problems we're trying to solve with technology, for example, discoverability, et cetera, et cetera, considering how we have the federated space and we sort of tend to think about it as a distributed database. However, it's not distributed, it's decentralized. So like you have different aspects. Every server has a different view of the network and that's like what's causing all the problems with discoverability, etc. Uh, so I think whenever you start thinking about these, uh, <laughs> these issues, then remember like what is the network made of? It's made of people. How do we create a social web? We always create it with the people using it rather than the technical issues. Technology is meant to like make it easier to use, of course. And by the way, there's like this open search standard for searching and uh, like discovering search endpoints for various objects, etc., for servers on, on the web. You heard Which it. You, know, you heard it. Uh, the Fediverse is people. It's people! <laughs> anyway, uh, I think that was the last question. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, happy to talk in the hallway if you want to. Thank you for the fellow panelists. <laughs> and everybody who's implemented a used activity pub. Yeah!